This tutorial is to help you uh, find the best way that fits your style for posting your work in a discussion board. So the first thing I want to do is go through how you can do this just by hand. So we're going to start with the lowest tech first and then we're going to work our way up. The first thing is you just grab a piece of paper and in your own hand, can you hear my paper? There you go, you grab your pencil, you write it all out. Um, and then you open up your post or discussion uh, in the discussion board or we can open up a new document and put it in there. So what I've done is I did my work by hand then I saved this to my computer then you go to insert picture and go find your picture uh, wherever you saved your picture. Um, I think I have another one in here so I can do that as well except I've highlighted that so it'll erase it. So come down here for the next picture Oops, sorry, things are going a little slower than planned. There we go. Okay, insert, picture, go find your picture, double click. There we go. So I have a different one here. Uh, it's kind of nice to put it in a Word document because as you'll see, mine's a little crooked. So I'm going to come over to here to rotate and there, there we go. And then I can just post this on my discussion board. I'm going to right click and press copy or you can press control C as well. Then go to your discussion board and what I've done is I just pressed control V to paste it in and there we go. So that's one way. Uh, you could also save that and attach it. So come in here. I could have saved this in, uh, in my file some, or in somewhere in my files and then I can attach my picture here as well. However, it's a lot nicer to just post it in your discussion board post so that somebody doesn't have to try and download something first to view your work. So that's kind of the, the lowest tech way is just to write it out all by hand. The next way is uh, to just type in your post. You're kind of limited though, and so you have to type out everything uh, by hand. So if I wanted to say uh, 2640 squared, I'm going to have to use my caret button, shift 6 squared plus x squared, which is shift 6, the caret button, that means x to the exponent of 2, equals 200, 2,641, shift 6 squared, and so forth. And that works as well. You can do that. My favorite way, though, is to do this all in a document. So I was doing this one right here. And that does take a while, you'll notice, compared to writing it by hand. But I really like to do this. Um, so that you don't have to try and worry about your handwriting and it's all just really nice and you can save it to your computer and then you don't have to worry about accidentally um, the internet having a problem and so I'm going to do this all by hand. I'm going to actually clean this up and show you how to do this one. So what I'd like to do is I go to insert and then I come over here to equation and press the equation button. And this is nice because it gives you a lot of options for equations. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the 200 or 2640 and I'm still going to do shift 6 to raise it to the 2 but when I press the space button what that does is it puts it in a professional mode versus linear. Over here you'll see professional and linear. If I wanted it to be linear, it'll uh, take it out so you have the carrot. I'm going to keep it in the professional mode because I like how it looks like it would look uh, if you're writing it by hand. Then I'm going to add x squared. So I'm just typing x and I come up here and get a script so it'll tell me where I want to put it but it's faster if you just do shift 6, the caret button, squared, then press the space bar and it moves it up into the exponent and so forth equals uh, 2,641, 
shift 6 squared and this is just as fast as writing it by hand once you get used to it it goes really fast but the the nice part about this is that you can save this and you can always go back to it if something happens on the internet um, you have it your phys well not physical you have your uh, digital copy that you can always go back to okay what's really nice about this as well is that you have uh, calculating options that you have right next to you and so what I like to do is in working it out so I'm going to insert another equation and let's say I've worked some things out and I know that x equals the square root so I'm actually going to come up here and find a radical get the square root there we go then I'm going to use my arrow button and press over to the left to go inside and I've already done the square root of both of those numbers and subtracted and I got 5281 now yes you'll notice I skipped about four steps that were in my photo if you missed that go ahead and uh, rewind this video really quickly so that you can find the photo again um, but I'm just showing how you can do this by our calculating in Word but yes you would uh, one of the fast ways of doing this versus by hand so I, I guess I'll show you the steps is I go through and I press I right click and I copy oops there we go copy and then return or enter and then paste it in and then I say oh I need to subtract this so I'm going to take this and cut I don't want the plus sign over there anymore come over here I'm gonna arrow over out of my exponent and subtract control V and it pastes it there so I'm sorry I should have showed that I shouldn't skip these steps so now I'm gonna copy and paste so that that's why this this way is a lot faster than uh, doing this by hand because you can just copy and paste so I do think that doing it um, since we're already working on the computer anyway you might as well uh, and then you would square these and to do that you can either use your calculator in your hand your physical calculator or I've shown how to download this TI 84 silver edition or 84 plus silver edition onto your computer and you can just have it right next to you exactly like my screen so you have on the left a word document on the right your calculator and just start typing things in the calculator over here you can push the buttons with your mouse or you can use your number pad on your keyboard which I prefer so I'm going to type in two six four one I can use the carrot button here as well you'll see it over here or if you're using your calculator in your hand uh, if it's a, just a scientific calculator a lot of them will have a Y to the X and that's the exponent button another option for just squaring is over here you'll see it says X squared and so you just square so you have two options you can use the carrot to raise it to the 2 and press 2 or the squared button if it's a squared if you have something like cubed then you need to use the carrot and cube but it's nice to have the squared button then I'm going to press enter and there I get the next part of the equation so I'm going to come down here and I just press control V to paste the second paste it in again and type in six nine seven four eight eight one and then I need to square this one so I'm going to delete that come over here and I can do it again in this calculator um, and I'm going to type it with my hand on my keyboard to whoops I need to, sorry select my calculator and not the word document two six four zero and again I can square it using this button or just to show a different variation raise it to the two this way and press enter with my mouse and then come over here and type it in six nine six nine six zero zero and that's how I ended up with x equaling I'm going to just press control V just to get the uh, x equals x equals and we'll subtract those so I can come over here and subtract or uh, since I didn't do anything in Microsoft Excel so what I do is I bring Excel and I minimize it over here and I use it like a calculator as well uh, so I have lots of different options to get it to calculate like a calculator I'm going to press equals and then do 
2641 and this one I have to use the caret button so shift 6 squared and I can do that or I can do the whole thing together um, and I can do that in my graphing calculator as well so I'll do equals 2640 shift 6 for the caret button and square it like this and then I can subtract those or I can do that all at once equals 2641 oops sorry shift 6 squared minus 2640 shift 6 squared and that's where we get the 5281 or if you wanted to see these individually we can actually cell reference press equals to calculate something and I want to do this subtract this number so I'm just doing a left click and then press enter and it's subtracted them so I have lots of different options that way or I can go back to my calculator and do this all at once as well so I could have done 2641 squared and I'm going to use my button here so I have to use the mouse subtract and I can use subtract either here or on my keypad uh, also note this is a negative sign so if you have a negative in here you cannot use the subtraction sign you have to use the negative if you're using Microsoft Excel then you use the negative sign on your keypad the subtraction sign okay so I'm going to do 2640 squared enter there we go um, and then I just need to find the answer for this I would just square root so I'm going to type in 5281 and then here I showed you we need the square root and then another cool way so here's your third calculating option which is why I think doing this on the computer is um, nicer than doing it by hand so I can come in here and if you have done what is called the Microsoft add-on uh, you go into Microsoft Word and I'll, I'll give you an option for that as well you go to uh, mathematics and or you can do the design tools either way it's in both of those you go to compute solve for X and it didn't do it for me I guess it doesn't like square roots so I guess that'll work on some nicer things so if we wanted to solve for X squared oh nope it's not gonna get it out of the radical I apologize so we would need to have and this is x squared that was my mistake uh, okay so I guess in this case we're gonna need to use the um, calculator or Microsoft Excel so either way we're gonna find the square root so over here we need second the second function and the radical button is here do you see this little blue square root sign there we go and then we'll type in 5281 then we need to close the parenthesis and that will square root it and yes some of you are thinking can't I just square root um, these right here and we could have we could have saved ourselves but I'm showing every single step so that uh, I'm not losing anyone so here yes those of you who said can I do a square root of all of this absolutely to do a square root in Excel we're gonna come over here and do SQRT and then open the parenthesis which is shift 9 and then we have to close the parenthesis and then press enter and it took the square root of that whole thing or if you want to break it into steps we can say okay now I want the SQRT open square root and cell reference left click here and then shift 0 to close it and we have lots of different ways to find that so uh, you're keeping everything by hand another uh, nice thing is using Excel we can just press copy come over here press control V or right click and press paste and it actually copies your answer over so I even like Excel over having the uh, graphing calculator because I don't have to try and type and I know for a fact that this is what uh, the computer gave me versus did I make a mistake in typing from here to here then uh, we like to highlight to show this is the answer we solved it okay 
Now that we have this, another option is I can save this document and then go into my discussion board and like before, we can press browse or attach and then browse and go find the document. But I don't encourage that a lot uh, because somebody can save the document to theirs and then steal your work. And while we all have the honor code, unfortunately, sometimes these things still happen. So what I would encourage you to do if you're going to go that route is to save this as a PDF and then attach it so that somebody can't steal your work and it keeps it all there. But like I said, I really like that um, I like when you have your work on the post and somebody doesn't have to download it. So another option is called print screen. So looking at your keyboard on your computer, above the backspace button is a button that says P-R-N-T-S-C-R, print screen. Pressing that button takes a picture of uh, what you're looking at on your computer. So I've just pressed it. I come down here and press Control V. And what it'll do is it'll print exactly what you're seeing. And then you can come and format whatever you want. So I can crop it down. Uh, just to show this part because that's what I wanted to show for my work and it's kind of small so I'm going to click out of cropping make it larger then right click and copy then go back into your discussion board post and press control V here and it pastes your work as a print um, from your um, screen uh, now that works really well but I have a new one that I really, really enjoy, and it's called the Snipping Tool. If you do not have the Snipping Tool already, it's on all Microsoft or PCs, I believe, and I think Mac has them as well. I, it's not called Snipping Tool, though. I don't think it's called something else, and I can find that out if you're interested. So what I do is I go to my File Explorer, and I just press uh, Search for Snipping Tool. Then I'll find it here, and right click and press create shortcut. The benefit of that is it's always on your desktop and you don't have to search for it again. So mine's on my desktop already and I'll minimize everything to show you where it is over here. So there's my snipping tool. I'll bring it up and instead of taking a, a screenshot, this is really convenient. Your snipping tool I'm going to do new. There's different options. You can do a freeform snip so you can draw out where you want to cut and uh, take your picture. I like the rectangular one. It's fast. So I'm going to choose rectangular and come up here. I left click just once and hold then pull it down and it takes a picture of what you just said take a picture of. The nice thing of this is I can come up and I can mark this and say hey this is my answer, um, or if you didn't like it that, you can erase it. You can use a highlighter. Uh, you can say, uh, I'm going to use the red pen and make a big arrow right here. Please check out this step. Oops, here. Something to whatever you want to do. Uh, you could also do that in your Word document as well. Uh, then I like to press copy because I've already saved my document. I don't need to save it, but if you want to, you could go ahead and save it and it'll give you options. You can save it as a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, or HTML. I prefer JPEG, so I don't save these very often. I just copy. So I'm going to press the copy button, go back into my discussion board post, and then press Control V to paste, and there you go. So that's my favorite one. Uh, I like the snipping tool because I can go ahead and use everything in uh, Microsoft Word and I don't have to worry about handwriting and it's really fast to copy and paste your steps to show everyone. Uh, also when we get into 1C you'll, you can use um, insert smart art to create uh, the, the Venn diagrams and again all you have to do is do a snipping tool, say I want a new one, copy it, and there you go. So you can get it into your discussion board post. And it's very easy. Uh, and I believe 
those were a bunch of different options. I have to make sure I got them all. I made a list. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good. Those are all the options for uh, that I use for discussion board posts. If you have any, please feel free to email me to suggest things um, for your uh, group members or for the class. And I hope that that helps with uh, showing your work in your discussion boards. Good luck on your homework and in your guided practice.